Hello, golf fans. Welcome back to another week of Daily Fantasy PGA. I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for DailyFantasySportsRankings.com to bring you my breakdown and top picks for the 2018 Farmers Insurance Open from Torrey Pines Golf Club. Big week this week with Tiger Woods making his first official start on the PGA Tour since this event last year. Uh, he's coming off a Hero World Challenge where he finished T9, had three rounds under 70, so very exciting to see him back playing well and uh, hoping he does very good this week. Kind of priced a little high for my liking in PGA for uh, DFS, but uh, we'll get to that here in a second. Before we get into the course and picks, let's go over how to access the sheet itself and uh, to best utilize the sheet. So we're going to start at DFSR.com. This is my weekly article you can find on the home page. And if you scroll down just below uh, Ricky Fowler's picture here in the opening uh, entry here, you can see DFS PGA Weekly Cheat Sheet. Also, once you get through the article, um, I do go over two of my favorite course history picks, form picks, and stats picks. Look at the weather. Down in the comments section, you can also find a link to the cheat sheet. And when you open that cheat sheet, um, it's going to be a view only. So what you're going to want to do, first of all, is go up to File, make a copy, name it whatever you'd like, hit OK. It's going to open another copy of that cheat sheet and now what you're going to be able to do is sort columns uh, make your own model just kind of play around a little bit more than uh, you were you were able to before so what i mean by that if you want it's it's always going to be sorted by DraftKings price when you first open it so if you wanted to sort by FanDuel price you go anywhere in this column d um, where you see a salary click on any of those salaries go up to data click sort sheet column d z to a that'd be highest to lowest and then you're going to see golfers listed uh, by their FanDuel price. So you can kind of see with the color coding, um, you know, where the price differences are and who's maybe a better play on what site. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to column C, which is DraftKings, go data Z to A, sort that, because we're going to concentrate mostly on DraftKings today. So the other thing you're going to be able to do when you open that up is now you're going to be able to slide over. Um, the green section is going to be your raw stats for each stats. Right now I've got it set at 30% of the 2018 season, 2017-2018 season with 70% weight on uh, the 2016-17 season stats. And I'm, I keep adjusting that every week as we get more data coming in this year. So then over in the orange section, this is where you're going to be able to make your own models. So if you feel... Um, like any of these stats, you know, one is worth a little bit more to you this week in your model. You can go and you can change those numbers as long as they add up to 100. This model here is going to be a little bit different than what you see when you first open the sheet. Uh, I'm going to be concentrating a little bit more on a cash model this week in the video. Um, I'll get to that here in a second. And then once you slide over all the way to the right, um, you've got your weighted ranking for stats here in column CR. And then from CS to CV here, um, this is where you can uh, finalize the model. So this week in this cash model, I've got 40% weight on stats, 10% on history, 30% on form, which is just average finish over the last five tournaments. And then uh, DraftKings points last five, 20% on that. So overall about 50% on uh, form. So by adjusting any of those there, it's going to adjust your overall rankings in column CX and then over in A here. So now that we've looked at that, um, we're actually just going to dig in a little bit. If you want to have a look at the course, you can go here. Um, kind of shows each hole, and this is just showing Torrey Pines South. Um, this week we're running Torrey Pines South, Torrey Pines North, so the first two days golfers are going to play one round on each of those courses. Torrey Pines South is going to play a little bit harder. Um, the North course used to be a whole bunch easier until they renovated in 2016. Um, they've made it quite a bit harder as well. So down here I've also listed uh, par threes. There's three par threes in the south course over 200 yards. That's of note. The other big note is the par fours. There's five of them um, from 400 to 500 yards. So the long, long iron proximity and distance is definitely going to be a factor this week. And then as you see, two of the par fives are over 600 yards as well. So I'm going to be looking at some par five scoring um, and how I kind of determined that. I looked at the last five years results, final scores. As you can see, it's not too high, but a lot of the scoring, most of the scoring, as you can see, 44.9% um, of the overall birdies in the tournament last year on the south course, which there's three rounds played on the south course, came on the par fives. So just four of the holes made up 44% of the birdies. And that trend continues as we go through 45%, 45% in 2015 again, 2014 we saw 40%, and then 48% uh, in 2013. So par 5 scoring is definitely going to be in my model this week as well. 
So in this week's video, like I said, I'm going to concentrate my picks um, on my targets for cash games. And cash games are your 50-50s, your double-ups, your head-to-heads. Building cash game lineups is just going to be a little bit different than building GPP lineups. We're not necessarily looking for the big upside, but rather looking for steady players who make the cut. Last week was a little bit different animal, um, just because they played three rounds with a 54-hole cut on Saturday. So the scores were a little bit higher, so we, we needed a little more upside in our cash game lineups. This week we're back to um, cut on Friday, 36-hole cut. So likely getting six of six guys through the cut, you're going to be cashing in your, in your uh, cash game lineups, especially your 50-50s and double-ups. Uh, Head-to-heads are a little bit more geared towards still it's only you know it's one versus one but still you're going to need a little bit of upside depending on what players your uh, your opponent has picked so every opponent's going to be a little bit different that way all right something else i tend to do more often than not in these regular events is go with a more balanced lineup in cash games and avoid the 10k plus players if possible avoiding the you know the stars and scrubs i am going to discuss um, both strategies here in this video as well um, but there is times I will go with a heavy stars and scrubs cash game lineup and most of the time when that's going to be optimal is going to be your, uh, your four majors for sure when there's a little bit softer pricing and a lot of elite players in the field. So when narrowing down my pool for cash games I also like to adjust my model a little bit. Um, as you can see it was a little bit different than uh, what it looked like when you first downloaded the sheet. So the first thing I did uh, this week and I'm just kind of you know been playing with this a little bit is I swapped the weights for bogey avoidance and birdie or better percentage just because we're not looking for as much um, upside. Plus, this is a tournament where the scores are, you know, around that minus 10, minus, minus 10, minus 11 range. It was minus 13 last year, but uh, we're looking for guys that are, you know, not going to make bogey and are going to stay in the tournament to make that 6 of 6. So I've also added weight to scoring average before the cut. Um, I feel that's important just to see how well a player does in the first two days of, of tournaments on average. Got weight on par 5 scoring. I've got weight on the long iron proximity. And then the other thing I've got more is I kind of swapped um, stroke gain approach and stroke gain around the green. Um, fairways are usually around 50% here on Torrey Pines South um, for you know average fairways that are hit so there's going to be a lot of shots that do miss the green so I think getting up and down and having a good strong around the green game is going to be key especially for cash games um, guys look trying to get six to six through the cut so that's kind of my model for this week and then like I said over here on the right I've got 40 percent on those stats I've got 50 percent total on current form with 10 percent on history so let's take a look at some of the players I'm targeting in cash games this week I've highlighted them in green here. I'm going to start off with uh, Charles Howell. Um, he's 50 to one this week. Um, he's 8,300, which is a really nice price. He's averaging 83.7 DraftKings points over his last five tournaments. He pops in both models this week. Uh, the regular model, as you'll see, I think he's number 10 in the overall in that model. He's number nine in this model. Um, he's made the cut 15 out of 15 times here at Torrey Pines with seven top tens, including twice in the last three years. He's two for two in cuts made in 2018. Um, we'll slide over here and just look at the current form. You can see the history in the current form here. So yeah, he's two two for two in cuts made in 2018. Was four for five in the fall portion of the season, and he's made 20 of his last 23 or 20 of 23 cuts all of last year as well. So then just kind of looking at the stats as well. He's seventh in stroke scan around the green. That stands out to me, and then just going over here, um, something I really look at, like I said, was the bogey avoidance. So he's sixth in bogey avoidance, or sorry, yeah, sixth in bogey avoidance, and then ninth in scoring average before the cut. So with a price, you know, in that low AK range, I'm gonna have a lot of Chucky in my cash game lineups this week. Next up, we got Tony Finau. He's number two in my overall model uh, cash game model this week. Also comes with a very attractive price under 9K just like Howell. Um, he doesn't have as many rounds here at Torrey Pines, but he's also got great course history. I'm gonna slide back and have a look at that. He's gotten better every year. Started out with a T24 in 2015, T18 in 2016, and a T4 last year. He's had more than enough distance to get it around the track. He's number one in uh, driving distance. I don't include driving distance in my models just because it's kind of a flawed stat on the PGA Tour stats because they only look at two holes um, every round so they don't really have a whole collection of their driving average driving distance on all the holes so um, 
we, we all know, kind of know who, who the driving distance guys are, so I'm just kind of looking for guys kind of, it's not crucial to have the driving distance, but it's sure going to help on this track at 7,700 yards. He's 21st, 18th and, and 21st in proximity from that 175 to 200 and 200 plus ranges, as you can see here. He's 9th in par 5 scoring, 14th in scoring average before the cut, and 23rd in bogey avoidance, and he also has a ton of upside to boot, ranking 18th in birdie or better percentage. The form has also been there this year as he's made all five cuts to start the 2017-2018 season um, with his worst finish at T32 at the Sony Open. Looking back even further, he hasn't missed a cut in 18 straight tournaments dating back to the players last June. Next player up, I got uh, Brendan Steele. He's number 10 in my cash game model this week. He's 4 for 4 in cuts made in 2017. 2017 18 including a win at the Safeway Open to open the year a um, little bit of an asterisk on that as he played poorly at the no cut event tournament of champions finished I believe um, as you can see here 29th so that's I believe there was 32 in that field so pretty much close to last place in that tournament so um, just keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, some of that to maybe go to PGA tour.com just look up the player profile for that information he's also got nice course history he's made six to seven cuts here in his career including five straight and finally he stands out statistically ranking top 25 in both strokes gain off the tee and approach averages over 300 yards off the tee he's 12th in par 4 scoring 40th in par 5 scoring and is top 30 in both a um, scoring average before the cut and bogey avoidance so stands out for me there as well and again he comes in under 8k so very attractive price to you know jam all three of those guys in um, at you know the average salary you're gonna have a nice balanced cash game lineup next up I got Kevin Streelman highlighted uh, he's 19th in my cash game this week he's 7500 so great price there again he's 80th in odds or sorry 80 to 1 in the odds um, 74 so looking at the DK points last five in this range here as you can see he's kind of the leader until you get down to my next pick, Kyle Stanley, but we'll get to that in a second. He comes in having made all six cuts to open the season, including four top 20 finishes and made 15 of his last 16 cuts going back to the Wells Fargo last May. <coughs> he had extremely poor history here at Torrey Pines earlier in his career, missing three cuts from 2010 to 2012. He then took three years off from 2013 to 2015, showed back up in 2016, finished third, um, and a T67 last year. So he did make the cut, but it wasn't that great. But it's nice to see that third place finish in 2016. He has had success here. He ranks top 30 in my sheet in stroke scan off the tee and approach. 11th in driving accuracy, so hitting these tough fairways shouldn't be a problem. He's 6th in scrambling, 8th in bogey avoidance, and 27th in scoring average before the cut. So I think he's going to be a nice... Uh, he may not have the upside, you know, to get inside that top 10, but I think he's definitely worthy of a top 25, top 30 for sure. Definitely a cut maker for me this week. Next up, I got Kyle Stanley. He's 13th in my cash game model. Um, he made all five cuts earlier this season, but like Steele, there's an asterisk because he did also did poorly at the Tournament of Champions no-cut event. Outside of that event, though, he's finished T21 or better in the other four events. And he's made 23 of 29 cuts last season with a win, 5 top 5s, and 12 top five, 25 finishes. So he's very consistent. He's made 5 of 7 cuts here at Torrey Pines in his career, including back-to-back -to -back top 25s the last two years. So he's trending nicely after missing some cuts in 2013, 2014, and a T67 in 2015. So good to see that. He's 10th in strokes gain off the tee, 46th in strokes gained approach. So a little bit, uh, little bit there. Um, to be concerned about but 46 I mean that's still still pretty good in this field he's 23rd in par 5 scoring and he's top 30 in both birdie and better percentage and bogey avoidance so he's got upside and and some safety with that bogey avoidance there as well 39th in scoring average before the cut so he's 7400 so he kind of fits in that range as well and then uh, digging a little deeper you know if you are going to do some stars and scrubs cash game lamps maybe specifically for your head to head contests um, so you can uh, jump into that 9k even up into the 10k range if you're liking some guys there um, like Brian Harmon he's fifth in the model he's been on fire top 20s in five five or six straight events now with top 10s in five of them 
you're going to want to dig down a little bit. And the first guy that pops for me is Emiliano Grillo. So he's 53rd in the overall model. Um, a lot of that has to do with he's he's only played here twice. He missed a cut in 2016, but he bounced right back and finished 33rd last year. So that's really good to see. He's made five of five cuts so far this season. He's now th in his third full season on the PGA Tour. Has made 47 of 55 cuts um, in events, which is an 85% cut rate. So really good to see that. He's been a very consistent golfer from the PGA Tour. I always use, I always like him uh, when he's in that uh, mid seven and lower range um, for my cash games. He also fits the model statistically. Um, just slide over and have the rank. Look at the ranks there. He's 18th um, off the tee, and while he ranks down in 69th in strokes gain approach, as you can see here, um, you slide over and have a look at the proximity. He's 14th in 150 to 175, 22nd from 175 to 234th from 200 plus. So his proximity gets a little bit better as you go from you know the shorter holes um, to some of these longer when he when he's needing his longer irons. So that's that's a positive there to see that for sure. And the risk comes with him as he sits 73rd in bogey avoidance and 75th in birdie or better percentage and 77th in scoring average before the cut. So there's a little bit of risk there, but at 7,000, um, I think he's nice. Even looking at the odds here, he is, like you're looking at your DK, um, we're going to get into this in a second and look at a few picks of this, but looking at uh, Colin BG there, the DK dollar to odds differential, he's a plus 33, which is really nice to see at 100 to 1. So he's 74th in salary. 41st in odds. Good to see there. So the last guy on my list, seeing a big drop in salary this week. He's a risk-reward play for Stars and Scrubs cash games. It's Chesson Hadley. He's number 8 in my overall model this week. He is also at 100 to 1, and he's a plus 59 when looking at your DK dollar to odds differential. He started the year with three straight top fives before withdrawing at the OHL. Um, sick. He did make the cut in that event, though. Since then, he's finished T37 at the RSM, T42 at the Career Builder Challenge last week. He's only played here twice with nothing special for history. He missed the cut in 2014, T58 in 2016, but he is quite a bit different of a player this year now that he's back on the PGA Tour. Um, so I think that's, that's positive to see that he has made a cut here in the past. Statistically is where he really stands out. He's 22nd off the tee. He's first in strokes gained approach. Fourth in strokes gained putting this year so far. Sixteenth in both par four and five scoring. Eighth in overall proximity and third from that 175 to 200. First overall on the sheet in birdie or better percentage and fifth in bogey avoidance. He's also first in scoring average before the cut. So he's got a lot of stats um, going his way. And like I said, the biggest thing that I notice is Vegas kind of agrees at a plus 59 DK to odds differential. So with that DK to odds differential, I'm going to go on. I'm just going to sort these columns, have a look at a few guys that maybe stand out. Um, not necessarily for cash games, but just overall how to use this. So I'm going to go into that BG column, click on uh, one of the numbers, go up to data, and I'm going to sort Z to A. These are going to be your best values. As you can see, it's still trying to figure out the information here when you sort this column, so just give it a second. So what we see, um, Chess and Hadley, JT post on, they're right there at the top. Um, Hadley, number eight in the overall model, so he fits a lot of things. He's 100 to 1, 97th in DraftKings salary, and 41st in odds. So there's quite a bit of a gap there. So you can kind of look at a few of these guys, um, check out some values that way. I kind of compare a whole bunch of stuff together just to see, like Bill Haas is a 90 to 1, so he's only 7,000, which is 30 73rd DraftKings salary, but 35th in odds. Really good to see there too. And then you can kind of reverse that, sort lowest to highest. You can see the guys that are kind of on the opposite end. So Joel Dahman, as you can see, he is 63rd in DraftKings salary, but 142nd overall um, when looking at the odds. So these are kind of guys that I'm probably going to fade for the most part. You know, getting down a guy that kind of pops in the models, Kevin Tway. He's 45th in salary, but 69th in odds. So I might, you know, before I might consider him because he was top 40 in the model, but uh, considering Vegas isn't really on, on him this week, doesn't think he's going to be that great um, at 225 to 1. He's probably someone I'm going to uh, avoid. So that's just kind of how I use that uh, DraftKings to FanDuel uh, odds differential. 
So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to sort by DraftKings salary here again. And those are a few of the players I'm, you know, I'm going to be targeting in cash games. I went over a few of them. If you have questions about any other players maybe to use in cash, ones that maybe are better for GPPs, make sure to leave a comment below in the comment section over here on DFSR.com or in the chat room. You can join me there as well. I'm there most every day. I'm going to be there uh, Wednesday night for sure. Um, leading up to lock. Um, it was a little bit earlier this week. I'm also going to be there Thursday morning before lock as well. You can also hit me up on Twitter at at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. And also make sure to check back in the article on Wednesday afternoon as we've got this section here who's being mentioned on Fanshare Sports. I kind of break down uh, the tag counts, top three tag counts in each salary range on DraftKings and then uh, provide two or three pivots that I like uh, for GPPs that could be lower owned, um, help you win a GPP tournament. So that'll be posted, like I said, Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for checking out the video. Make sure to like, hit the like button below, subscribe to my channel to get notifications when more videos are released. Good luck this week, everyone.